Right. And so now we look at the second part of this question. They say prove the identity uh, cos theta. All right. So let's write it down first. So this is going to give us cos of theta minus. Now if I look at this, let's work on the left hand side, right? So there's not much we can do on the right hand side. So I'm going to say on the left hand side, I've got cos of theta minus the cos of 2 theta plus 2 divided by uh, 3 sine of theta minus the sine of 2 theta. So let's make that look like the right hand side. There's not much that we can do on the right hand side. We're going to leave the right hand side as is. Okay, so what I'm going to do, firstly, I've got the cos of a double angle. Already I've got cosine over there, right, of a single angle. So I'm going to convert this to something that has a, um, you know, that has a cosine in it, right? So we know this is going to be cos of theta minus, now remember, cos of a double angle is 2 cos squared of theta minus 1 plus 2 and this is divided by that's 3 sine theta minus now remember the sine of a double angle is 2 sine theta cos of theta right now let's try and do that quickly so that's cos of theta minus 2 cos squared of theta plus 1. Please keep this in mind that you are multiplying into the bracket, right? So this is plus 2. We're dividing this by... Now if you notice there, we've got sine theta and sine theta. So I'm going to take that out as a common factor. And that gives me with 3 minus 2 cos theta. Okay? Now let's go to the top part. So I see I've got 1 and 2 which are common factors of each other, right? So that gives me 3, right? And I've got plus the cosine of theta minus 2 cos squared of theta. Now ladies and gents, I want you to be really smart about this. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick just now. Okay, uh, that's 3 minus 2 cos of theta. Now, you can already tell in this case, we've taken out a sine theta there. And in your answer, you've got a sine theta that is there, right? That, that is on the right-hand side. And I'm trying to get the right-hand side to be equal to the uh, left-hand side, right? So what you need to do... Uh, look at the top, the numerator of your right-hand side, okay? So, which means one way or the other, we are going to get rid of this part here, right? So, look at this. We've got a quadratic equation at the top, and which means we can be able to factorize that quadratic equation, right? What would be the factors? So, one of the factors has to be what you already have there. That's 3 minus 2 cos of theta. Now, what is the other factor? The other factor would be what remains after you have removed, you know, you've cancelled the other two. So what remains in the numerator of your right-hand side? It's 1 plus cos theta, okay? And you can work it out. You'll see that you get exactly what we've got there, right? So this is divided by sine of theta into 3 minus 2 cos theta. Guess what? Well, this guy cancels, with, uh, cancels out with that guy. And what are we left with? 1 plus cos of theta divided by sine of theta. And what do you know? Left-hand side is definitely equal to, look at me writing not equal to, right hand side. And that is how the cookie crumbles for that question. Okay, right. I hope you got it.
Okay, let's go to the next portion of this question. So they say to us, we've got sine of uh, theta, sine of 3 theta over 2, okay, and uh, cos of 3 theta over 2, cos of theta. And this is equal to negative root 3 over 2, right? So let's write that down. So we've got sine theta, sine of 3 theta over 2. And we've got, it's, is it a negative? It's a plus, right? Plus the cos of 3 theta over 2, cos of theta, right? And they said this is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Now, ladies and gents, I want you to note in this case, what did they say? Determine the general solution of this okay right now we want the general solution ladies and gents right so what are we going to do if you look at what we have on the left hand side right we've got what seems to be now a compound angle formula right now i want you guys to to keep in mind when i have got the cos of a plus b what does it become it becomes cos of A cos of B minus sine of A sine of B. So I want you to please look at it. So these kind of look the same. The only difference now is that we started with sine sine, right? And cos cos, right? But we can swap it around, you agree? But Remember, because we've got a plus sign in between, then that means cos A minus B, right, would be equal to, right, that whole thing. So we wouldn't have changed anything. Now, which means we are subtracting those two from each other, right? So this would mean this is, okay, let's write it in the usual form that you're used to. Cos 3 theta over 2 cos theta plus sine 3 theta over 2 sine theta and this is negative root 3 over 2 so which means this would be the cos of our a is 3 theta over 2 minus theta and this is negative root 3 over 2 so if I notice that both of them are in terms of theta, right? So this is like uh, saying one and a half theta minus one, that gives us theta over two. So this would be cos of theta over two is equal to negative root three over two. Now, ladies and gents, let's find the answer, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that. Now, some of you prefer using the, uh, you know, um, reference angle method. But what I always do is to say, right, remember for cos, right? So cos is, you always say plus or minus. So theta over 2 would be the arc cos or the inverse cos of negative root 3 over 2. So let's find that theta over 2 is, right, so I'm going to say shift cosine of negative. So let's not forget that root 3 over 2. Okay, and let's close that bracket. And I get 150. But because we are dealing with cos, you just simply say plus or minus 150 right now please remember ladies and gents so that would be theta over 2 is plus or minus 150 plus k 360 right where k is an element of integers now for those of you that prefer to use uh, the reference angle method right you could have actually done the same but in this case you just don't put the negative there and what you'll say is uh, a shift cos, 
of root 3, square root of 3, divided by 2, okay? And uh, that would have given you 30. But what you do is you check where is cos negative, right? If you use your cast diagram, right? So you know that cos is negative at the second as well as on the third quadrant, okay? So in that case, you would have found your solution there. You'd say 180 minus 30 and the other one would be 180 plus 30, okay? So nothing wrong if you did it this way, right? So you'll say theta over 2 is negative 150 plus k360, okay? Or theta over 2 would be equal to 150 positive plus k360. So remember, we've already stated that k is an element of integers, right? So we multiply everything by 2. Okay, we multiply everything by 2 so that theta is equal to negative 300 plus k 720 or theta is equal to 300 plus k 720 and remember we did say that k is an element of integers all right so that is how we are going to find that solution over there